Hey everyone, this is Christian Duran, okay? Before I get into this video, I just want to preface with this, okay? This is just only to show facts and to substantiate my position with facts. To make it irrefutable, uh, okay? Because this is something that needs to be done to wake people up. So, what you are seeing right now is a pre-recorded video. Then also what you see when you see from January the 21st to the 17th of January the 27th to 2007. These are attacks on Christians, okay, by the perpetrator guest, Muslims. But anyway, my pre-recorded video will, will do the rest. So you guys, please sit back take off your perceptual filters okay get rid of your presuppositions and just be open to this all right all right so um let's get into this hey everyone good to see you this is christian duran and if the, and if this is your first time coming to my YouTube channel. I just want to welcome you. But this is not a PC channel. I am definitely a devout Christian. But this is not a PC channel. Um, I do not have a soft, subtle approach. I have an aggressive personality type, and I'm working on that to be more assertive. Okay, so I am on a transformation, or going through a transformation, as I should say. But anyway, since this is a non-PC channel, and I'm a straight shooter, and I don't believe in censoring what I have to say, because I believe that is true free speech, and it is my constitutional right. If you don't like it, grant it, it is not my position, or it is not my intention to offend people, but if you get offended, you must ask yourself, why I do the same thing too when I'm offended. Why am I offended by what this person said? And I have to analyze my own heart. So please analyze your own heart. If you think I'm saying something uh, to offend you, but do not interpret it as if I am intentionally saying things to offend you or to cause division. I know a, a lot of people have labeled my channel and my videos to be divisive. Well, you know what? The word of God is divisive, period. That is my standard for morale. That is the absolute standard that I live my life by is the Bible, the word of God. And I have a relationship with Christ. So I'm not with religion. I'm with spirituality. Anyway, with that being said, I just want to make some things completely clear to everyone. And I'm going to elaborate by saying this. People in the West, we are so kind hearted. We have been conditioned to believe that everyone has the same intentions at heart as we do. We live in a bubble in the Western world. In a bubble. We have certain philosophies that are appealing to the masses and it has to be acceptable to the masses in order for it to be heard. So when it's dictated, at our universities or other forums for debate or just say social media, everyone wants to talk about topics that are popular, topics that are not controversial, topics that do not deal with the heart issue. So you guys, we're gonna have a heart issue, a man to man or man to woman an American to another American or an American to those in the Western world. We must level with each other and talk about serious issues that actually make an impact on our society instead of all this superficial, trivial, uh, trivial nonsense. So there are archetypes of life, okay, that influences your life, period, either if you believe in it or if you don't. That is religion absolutely politics absolutely and so on and so on but 
politics and religion, they influence your life, period. How come we can't talk about those things? How come they're not popular? They definitely should be talked about because politics and religion molds your society. But we can't talk about them. That's why people lack critical thinking skills. This is why we live in a bubble. The level of idiocracy is increasing, not decreasing. It's increasing because no one well, majority of the people that I come across, they believe that they, their ideology should not be challenged. Yes, your ideology has to be challenged. And anyone has the right to challenge your position. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So let's dive right into this. Because so I want to make this really clear. And I want to tie some things together for you if you haven't been able to tie it together. When we're dealing with, well, actually here, let me start off like this. What comes to your mind when you think of religion as far as like its dictates, um, its decrees, like what comes to your mind? Do you think it's something where it's like um, you live holy, higher standards? Definitely higher standards of morale. You, it's, it's something above the average. And it deals with the purification of a person's mind or their soul when you think of religion or certain rituals and traditions that people adhere to. Now, what if you have a religion that's reverse of that? Where it pulls down your morality. It takes away your freedom. It puts you in slavery to rituals and tradition. It makes you bloodthirsty. It makes you desensitized. It takes away your ability to think. And it's primitive. Completely primitive. It causes a constant regression. So this is why I say it a lot, you guys, about inimical belief systems. That's what I am at battle against. That's what I battle against every day. Inimical belief systems. And this inimical belief system that I am talking about today is completely bloodthirsty. It's lustful and it is destined for world domination. We are talking about Islam. This is a primitive religion, not a faith, but a religion of rape, oppression of the non-Muslims. They have the right to rob. They have the right to lie. Now, I want you to remember that each and every Muslim, their commission is to spread Islam to there is no other God that people say besides Allah. That is the mission for every Muslim. There's only one interpretation of the Quran. When you hear of ISIS, when you hear of these radical imams, how come there are so many of these radicals as they claim? That there are, but they say it's oh it's a it's a it's a minority. That's not true. There's only one interpretation of Islam, and according to the Islamic scholars, Sayyid Bukhari, the Tabari, Shia Muslim, these hadiths that interpret the Quran, all of them back the Quran as far as being violent, to kill the Christian and the Jew, and to eradicate any other faith in this world or other religion. Now, I want you guys to remember this. This is called the Islamic conquest. They want to set up a caliphate. And we live in this bubble in the Western world thinking that everyone is kind hearted and they're nice. This is a indoctrination that kills a person's soul 
when they join Islam and they start to read the Quran and they actually follow the Quran for what it says, you turn out with groups like ISIS, Al Qaeda, Hamas, El Shabaab, I mean, whatever they're called uh, in Africa. And then there's tons more other Muslim terrorist groups all over the world, scattered all over the world. I'm sick of people using this false narrative when they say that, oh, it's only a minority. That's crap. Sharia law is oppressive to the non-Muslim period. Sharia law oppresses the Muslim. Islam it does not mean peace. It means submission. And it also oppresses the Muslim. It's not freedom. You can't listen to music. And then we'll say, well, you know what? There's so many different interpretations. There's only one interpretation of the Quran. There's only one Muhammad. There's only one Allah for them. So when they tell you that it's been taken out of context, don't let them lie to you because they can. And it's called al taqiyya OK, they have the right to lie. But this is a religion. As, as I as I as I built the context earlier. When you think of religion, it's something that is supposed to be above man's standards. Islam is not above man's standards. It is below man's standards. Women are treated as commodities. Non-Muslims under Sharia law are second class citizens. Why does a Christian or a Jew or a non-Muslim have to pay a jizya tax just because they're not a Muslim? How come your freedom of speech is taken away in Muslim countries? Sharia law is not compatible with the United States Constitution. If you actually do your research, don't take my word for it. Do your research. Do your research. That's the problem with the United States. We get so many bleeding hearts so quick to draw a conclusion. And then they tell the people who actually do their research that you are a bigot and you're a hater and you're a fear monger. But we do our research. We, I'm so sick of ignorant people who are pseudo intellectuals with bleeding hearts and they're bleeding in the heart for the wrong people. So let me draw this out for you. As I said before, their mission is to spread Islam to there is no other religion besides Islam. And if you refuse to become a Muslim, you can be killed. But this is the religion of peace. If you become a Muslim and you leave Islam, they have the right to kill you. But this is the religion of peace that says to kill Christians and Jews. So here's the question I have for you. Since people have a problem tying everything together, and I believe it correlates, okay? Here, let me spell. So, with the Syrians... Well, let's just say the Muslim refugees, there are 50 plus Muslim countries. When you combine them, they are bigger than Europe. How come Muslims are not helping Muslims? How come these refugees are going to Western countries? I want you to ask yourself that and think about that. How come they're going to Western countries and they are refusing to assimilate? I believe in thy diversity. I do not believe in multiculturalism. I believe that when you come to the United States, you accept the United States culture, our way of life. You respect our laws. It's not the other way around where you dictate to us how we are supposed to do things in our own country. People have that completely screwed up. But then when you are a true patriot and you acknowledge the, the disrespect that these foreigners have for your law, your customs and your traditions, you're considered an Islamophobe. Well, what about them? They're a Christian phobe. They're an American phobes. And so sick of people tossing around labels. Look at Europe right now. Germany. 
has been overran by immigrants from Muslim countries. Rape has skyrocketed in Europe because the Quran says that it's okay to rape non-Muslim women. People need to start doing their research. They have these rape gangs going around, Muslims, and they're raping non-Muslim women. Majority of them are white women that they are raping. They're not raping Muslimas. They're raping non-Muslim women, and they feel that they are doing nothing wrong because this is what their religion teaches them. You can't say anything about their prophet, but they can say anything they want to about Jesus Christ or your country and the way that you live. But you can't say anything about Islam because you're an Islamophobe. How dare they? They are saying in about 20 to 30 years, France is going to be predominantly Muslim. There are no go zones in France, but this is the religion of peace and they have no go zones in France. There are actually some no go zones here in the United States. Foreigners, foreigners coming to other people's country and refusing to assimilate. Some of these no-go zones, they are teaching and indoctrinating the youth to hate their own country here in the United States and abroad. To hate your own countrymen. And do not feel bad for the kefir or the infidels who are the non-Muslims. People need to wake up. We are witnessing right now the slow Islamification of the West. Atheists, they want to complain about Christians so much. Well, wait till they get a load of how Muslims conduct business. Just wait till they get a glimpse of it. They already have seen the terrorist attacks. They have, but you know what? It hasn't been full-fledged. Look at Christians in Muslim countries. They are virtually non-existent. They are almost slowly, completely eradicated. This is the slow genocide of Christians. But no one says it, anything about it. And this is the biggest, the biggest humans right violation of today is Christian persecution. But we got these libtards here in the United States complaining about a Muslim getting stuck on a flight just because Donald Trump passed a ban from seven radical Muslim known countries. And they're slaughtering Christians. They have been slaughtering Christians by the millions and burning their churches. Beating them, the Coptic Christians in Egypt, their daughters are kidnapped and raped and sold to Muslims. There's Christians in Pakistan. They live in these tentaments where sewage is dumped on them. And they have to beg for clean food. The Yazidis in Iraq right now, they have to hide on a mountain because they're being slaughtered, raped, beaten, burned alive, tortured, crucified even. You don't hear the liberals talking about that. And it's crazy that they're having these million woman march. You wanna have a march to protest against Donald Trump who's, cause you're so stupid that you don't even know that he's protecting you? How come you won't protest about those Muslim women in these Muslim countries who can't even drive? The women who are forced into a hole and they are covered with dirt up to their shoulders to where their head is sticking out of the ground and they're stoned for accusations. 
How about the women who are raped in Muslim countries by Muslim men? But the thing is, they can't do anything about it because you know what? She has to have two other witnesses because her testimony is not equivalent to that of a man. Those are real issues. But you liberals are so obsessed with trying to tear down and deconstruct the United States that you are so, so entwined with nothing but the lies from the media, or I'm going to say complete distortions and exaggerations, and you're so entwined with your hypocrisy that you are willing to even desecrate the American flag. That American flag does not only represent government. There are men and women who died for that flag. And you have the nerve to burn an American flag. You act no different than a radical Muslim. We care. Us patriots, we care about our country. We care about our countrymen. That's why we do our research to have an informed opinion, not an opinion. I can't stand opinions. An informed opinion I can deal with, but I'm more of a man of facts. You liberals have no idea what you are slowly ushering in. It's a huge Trojan horse. And you're completely oblivious to it because you're so caught up with yourself. You liberals don't know anything about self-sacrifice. Why? Because the majority of you are snowflakes? You live in your parents' basement? Or you go to a college where you have to have your little safe spaces? Because you're offended? Well, welcome to the real world. It doesn't go your way. The world does not evolve around you and your feelings. The truth can defend itself. You can defend yourself as well. But the thing is, though, you don't choose to do that. You want to try to slowly erode the United States Constitution and take away our freedom of speech. Take down the American flag in schools. Have we lost our mind in the United States? Who are we pandering to? The Muslims. When do you guys pander to the Christians? When do you guys pander to any other religious group? It's always the Muslims who are being pandered to. Let me just tell you something, okay? They are no better than anybody else. They do not deserve preferential treatment. And yes, every other person or group that comes here to the United States, they assimilate with our culture, our values, our traditions. Now you're talking about you can't even say Merry Christmas anymore. Ooh, wait. Uh, you know, honestly, I'm going to say this. If it was up to me, I would give you liberals a serious, a serious reality check. I will put you on a freaking boat and drop you off in the Middle East, in Iraq. How about Saudi Arabia? How about we take you to Mecca? No Christian is allowed in Mecca. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Uh, wait, actually, a non-Muslim is not allowed in Mecca. Wow. But this is the religion of tolerance and peace. I would love to drop you off there in the Middle East. So you can see the atrocities yourself. So you can be beat and spit on and treated badly. Maybe you need to experience that. I bet you, I bet you, you liberals didn't even know that in Sudan, Africa right now, Islam still has African slaves. Did you know that? Did you know that Islam actually sanctions slavery? Did you know that Islam had slaves centuries before the Europeans got involved? And it was Muslims that even sold the Africans to the Europeans? People need to start doing their fact checks. Mm -mm -mm. Let this video be a wake up call. And then also, too, I'm just going to say this, too. Okay, I'm sick of you Christians 
with no no spine. You don't have a backbone. You have no balls. You're real good at trying to tell another Christian how to be a Christian. But when it's time for you to stand up for the word of God, you're nowhere around. When it's time for you to be boldly and testify to this word in front of opposition, you're a coward. You're nowhere. But yet you're so quick to try to scrutinize another Christian. Get some balls. Stand up for your faith. Then you try to criticize me. If I have enemies because of standing on this word right here. Okay. And I'm not going to sit up here and say I'm 99% right all the time. No, I have error. I have flaws, but I'm open to reproof. But I would not let a spineless Christian try to tell me what I should say and how I should say it. When that person is completely inactive in the kingdom. This watered down Christianity that they preach nowadays, they don't even preach about the Holy Spirit. They don't even preach about forgiveness of your sins or that you actually do have sins and that you have a sinful nature. That, oh, you know, God loves you. You can do whatever you want to do. No, that's not true Christianity. You cannot do what you want to do. Ooh, there's the, all these prosperity uh, messages and you know what? Um, uh, it's all about feeling good. No, no, no. That is not true Christianity. True Christianity is about sacrifice and boldness and obedience to the word of God, not out of obligation, but because you love God and it causes a slow circumcision of your heart, which is, it changes you from the inside out. That is spirituality, not religion. Ooh, man, you, you know, I'm not frustrated at all, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm completely passionate because I want people to wake up. Please wake up. Wake up. Start doing your duty as a Christian. Be who you are. Have humility. Accept who you are for your strength and your weaknesses. And just know that Jesus Christ loves you, but... The thing is, let the spirit guide you. I'm sick of people compromising the word of God, giving these watered down, weak, spiritless messages. A lot of these churches are, are, are graveyards, spiritual graveyards. They're there, but where's the Holy Spirit? Wow. You know. Jesus wasn't popular. I know my word's not going to be popular. Honestly, I expected to have around like 8,000 subscribers, but let's be realistic here. The true gospel, when it's being preached that Jesus Christ came and he died for you and he is the only way and he was resurrected in three days and now he sits at the right hand of God. He is your intercessor. You are covered in his blood and you are supposed to be living a life of sanctification. That means that you are constantly being renewed every day and you're laying down your flesh to become more Christ-like. That's not popular. And it never will be proper, uh, popular. The word of God hurts, but it cuts deep inside. And it is a cut that is fortunate and it is good for your soul because it cuts away the sin that is decrepit and causes decay with inside you. So in order to change a nation, you must change them from within, not on the outside. That's the difference between spirituality and religion. Religion is on the surface. Look at Islam. It's the most religious out of any other religion in the world, most religious, but yet it's the most decayed on the inside. You judge a tree by its fruits. Over 30,000 terrorist attacks since 9-11 with millions and millions did because they want to scream Allah Akbar. But yet they say that no, they are misinterpreting their religion. No, 
You study Islamic history, study the life of Muhammad. Study how they conquered Constantinople, which is Turkey today. Study how they how Muhammad got all of the Jews and the Christians out of Saudi Arabia back in the day. It was not peaceful. It was a spread religion by compulsion conquest. Islam has been this way for 1400 years and is not going to change. It is every Muslim's job to emulate Muhammad. Muhammad was a blood thirsty savage. He was a womanizer. He was a thief. And he was a mass manipulator an extreme propagandist. He was crafty. He was shifty. He came up with these new revelations every time his old revelations were questioned. Where here's the thing, when you have a revelation, you don't have to have a new revelation. Then it's truly not a revelation. I challenge you all, if you don't believe what I'm saying, go out and buy a Quran, okay? Go and buy the Quran. The hadiths are expensive. So go and buy a Quran and you can go online and you can look up some hadiths. Get the most authoritative hadiths, okay? Like Saeed Bakari, okay? Tabari. See a Muslim, a Shia Muslim. Get those and this will help you read this Quran. This Quran is not written in chronological order. It's sporadic. It bounces back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There is not one complete story in here besides one. And you know what's all in this? Bloodshed, killing, spreading Islam by compulsion, taking away people's rights and freedoms. You guys need to do your research and stop buying into the lies from mass media and then these so-called moderate Muslims that say, well, that's not true. Why would you lie to me if you say you really care about your people? Look at the Muslim countries today. They are in shambles, civil war, civil upheaval. And what is what do they all have in common? This. Your ideology determines your surroundings. People need to start tying stuff together. Whew. I know this is a long video, you guys, and I do apologize about that. But people need to start getting the backbone. This is Deron signing off. I love you guys. I love my Americans. I love my people of the West. I even love Muslims because they are also victims of Islam themselves. That's why I have compassion. But I must speak the truth boldly. I don't want you to take this message as if I am in, in, inciting hate or inciting violence. I would never say that. Because it is my duty to love thy neighbor as myself. <sighs> Oh, this is so hard. This is so hard because I just want you guys to wake up. There's a Trojan horse coming to the United States. But thank God for Donald Trump. Thank God for those other Americans who have discernment. Thank God for all those Christians who prayed without ceasing. Thank you for your fervent prayer. But you guys need to wake up. This is getting serious. This is a spiritual battle. It's always been a spiritual battle for the minds of mankind. Wake up. Start tying things together. Look for the correlations. Ask yourself, why is it this way? Do your due diligence. There's nothing wrong with doing research and being corrected when you're going in the wrong direction. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Anyway, I love you guys. You got to stay strong. And protect your heart, mind, and your soul. I'm so serious. Anyway, until next time, have a great day. During the whole time of my video,
I was taking breaks. Scrolling on this list. <clears throat> this is a list of all the Christians who have been killed or Christians who have been injured. Since 9-11, this is only on Christians, not against Hindus or um, um, other religious groups. This is only on Christians. Look at how long and extensive this list is. And you're going to tell me this is the religion of peace. This is not a few. It's not. Look at this list. So much for the religion of peace you, that you have to have an extensive list of Christians being murdered. That this is the religion of peace. Anyway, bye bye.